Hey y'all, Jackie here, and welcome to a video on redrawing boning channels that contains zero double entendres. This is Fantastical Follies Costuming, where we partake in various sewing shenanigans. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back to the insanity, my friends. Things are a little hectic Shay Jackie right now. My day job is in accounting and tax season's in full swing, so I'm working insane hours right now. Between that and world events, I needed to be a little silly with this video. Well, sillier than usual. So I've got a quickie for you about boning things. Hello, I am TJ Jackie here with a public service announcement. If you are offended by my previous statement, do us all a favor and stop watching now. You will not enjoy the rest of this video and I will not enjoy wasting my precious time dealing with you not enjoying the rest of this video. Secondly, if you are of the straight male persuasion and think that me making a couple of jokes is an invitation for you to make inappropriate comments to me, know that it is not. I suggest you refrain. And if you don't, I promise that I will go full Heisenberg on your ass, capiche? Now back to Perky Jackie. I'd take that one seriously. She's got excellent knife skills and has no guilty conscience. Mais oui, this is true. We are excellent with the knives. Oh no, Chef Jackie, is it going to be one of those videos? Of course it's going to be one of those videos. If there are two things that require precision, it is stays and souffles. What? Like you are the only one who can make bad jokes? Speaking of which, stick with me till the end of the video where I have a short little announcement. Now, let's get to the meaty stuff and talk about boning. Firstly, remember that this is only one method of restructuring boning channels. I'm a costumer, not a dress historian. While I've done a lot of corsetry, my experience lies almost entirely in modern and theatrical methods. I'm interested in historical adequacy, but it's not my overall goal. This video is geared more towards beginners who might be intimidated by the process and won't go into some of the subtler nuances that come with years of research. I am not the person to do that video. Guess what, y'all? A boning channel is a boning channel. Two parallel lines that create a nice, happy little place for your bones. So redrawing the channels basically just means moving the parallel lines somewhere or adding an additional set. Things get a little more complicated when you're working with corsets because those channels tend to follow the curves of the body instead of the nice straight lines you see in the 17th and most of the 18th centuries. But you can apply this theory to anything with a bone. For example, this is Taco Bell's bodice that I made in 2019. I've restructured it to make it into a full corset by adding a boning channel to each seam, plus two on each side of the center back to allow for grommets. Despite corsets having weirder placements, the theory is the same. Keep to your channel size and keep to the same angles. This is important because if the angle shifts, then it might not lay properly along your body. You'll see a little of this in the practical portion of this video because I make that mistake. There's a point where I do not have a good bone. What do I need to redraw boning channels? A ruler and a pencil. Now, if you have a little money to spend, there's this honker. This is a quilting ruler. It's six inches wide by 24 inches long, and each eighth of an inch is marked on both axes. And it's clear so you can see through your lines. They retail at box stores right now at about 30 bucks, but if you're patient and watch for coupons, you can get it at half off, which is well worth it. This is probably my third most used tool in my arsenal under only maybe my scissors and my tailor's chalk. So it's a great investment if you have the means. Okay, you're thinking in your head, that's fine and dandy, Jackie, but where the heck do I put it? Do your research. First, look at extant examples of your stays or corsets from the appropriate period. Get an idea of the lines, curves, and directions of the boning channels. You'll see variations, after all, everyone's body is different. But if you look at enough examples, you'll start to see regularities or patterns. Rules of thumb. A couple of things to remember. 
One, if your stays have tabs, make sure you have boning going down into them. We don't want no flabby tabs. Two, always mark out your seam allowances and lacing channels. You never want to bone into your seam allowances, y'all. Three, don't remove boning on either side of the eyelets or grommets. These are structural and help with the burden of the lacing. In addition, they must remain erect. Straight up and down, y'all. Four, don't draw a boning channel with at least one hole. You gotta get it in somehow. Adding or removing horizontal bones. If you're well endowed, adding horizontal channels can really add some support and oomph to the bust, like on the set of stays. We can see this particularly in the latter part of the 18th century. All you need to do is to shorten the vertical bones and redraw horizontally for the first few inches of the stays in the front. You can also add them in addition to the straight bones if you need even more support by adding a separate boning panel between the interlining and lining. I'll go into more detail on this in my next video because I actually use that process for the stomacher. To remove the horizontal bones, all you need to do is extend your vertical bones upward from their existing positions. Just draw the lines. Albeit, my lines always tend to be a little bendy, but that's what the ruler's for. Adjusting channels for fit. When you take in, the new seams tend to eat into the existing boning channels. Remove the bone and try it on. If it's not wrinkling too bad, you're probably fine just getting rid of the channel outright. If it's wrinkling, then I'd probably just adjust the next boning channel by moving it slightly closer to the seam. If you're letting out, you may need to add an additional channel. In this case, all you need to do is use your handy clear ruler and draw another parallel line. Keep to the same pattern as the bone next to it. If it's straight up and down, then move over an equidistant amount and draw the parallel lines there. If it's slanted, then adjust your angle accordingly. The tricky bit here is if you take in a seam at different widths. For example, if you take it in half an inch at the top, but a quarter inch at the bottom. This is going to change the angle of your seam. You may need to adjust the angle of your boning as well if it starts to torque. This is why doing a mock-up is so important. Try going parallel to the seam, then if that doesn't work, try going parallel to the next boning channel. See what works best. Don't be afraid to experiment. From a halfy to fully boned. If your stays are fully boned and you feel like it's too much, you can remove some of the bones to ease on the support. This is the most important time to do your research. Taking away channels isn't difficult per se, but you need to make sure that you're leaving the ones that are structurally integral to the design. Look at half-boned extend stays. Again, leave the ones around the eyelets. You'll also want to leave any channels that take a lot of strain. Think the ones that are directly supporting the bust or along your side seams. Again, be prepared to do a mock-up, maybe several, and don't be afraid to experiment to see what works. In the end, what matters is that it's comfortable and you feel supported, but not like you're in a vice. Help, I can't breathe. And what if you've got a happy and wanna go full bone? Guess what? The hard work has already been done for you because the important bones are already there. All you need to do is draw parallel lines that follow the existing design. This is what I wanted to do with my mullet stays. So instead of me jabbering on about it, let's bone kids. First, I drew my pattern pieces on clean sheets of paper. Then I used my ruler to true up all of the edges and make sure everything was nice and straight. This takes a while, but given that the tissue paper likes to squidge, it's a necessary step. Okay, so here are my seam allowances. Okay, we've got quarter inch on the tops and the bottoms, and then we have an inch on the sides. And the pattern is 5 eighths of an inch, so I added another 3 eighths to get my full inch. This is because I want to have extra seam allowance in case I ever need to let these out. That's odd. This is obviously where the holes are supposed to be. And there's a boning here, but there's not actually a boning channel on here. The reason for this is because the boning channel is formed after stitching the seam allowance. The pattern construction wants you to sew the lining to the flatten the fashion fabric and interlining 
right sides together, and then flip the whole thing out so there are no raw edges. This would create the boating channel. Since I'm making these stays the more historically adequate way by completing everything and then hand sewing the lining on top, I need to actually mark that boning channel. I'm just gonna put dots here so that I remember that that's where the lacing goes, okay? And the lacing ends right here, right here, okay? That's the end of the lacing, oops. There's another channel. And so naturally we've got another boning channel here already. And then from there, we're just going to add them in half inch increments. We've got one, two, three, we're gonna do one more. Here is the back, 12 back. And then I'm going to take a colored marker and I'm just going to scribble in the seam allowance so that I know where the seam allowance is. And then I'm going to take another colored marker, which I'm sitting on, and I am going to mark And you really want to use a fine tip for this and take the time to get it as precise as possible because if you mess it up, you won't be happy. Okay, so there's our back done. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the side back. And I don't have to make too many modifications to this because this one is already fairly boned. The only difference is, is that I'm basically gonna make these empty spaces boning channels. And so what I'll do instead is just start from here and draw my lines, because this isn't quite a boning channel. So I'll just start from there and go boom, 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 all the way across. Okay, here is my front piece. Now this one has, I've traced this out and I've added my 3 8 of an inch so I have my full inch seam allowance here. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated because I started to make adjustments on here. I'm gonna mark my supposed stitch line, which is an inch in, but I took it in quarter of an inch on top to a half an inch down here. You're actually going to mark quarter inch here and a half inch here to three eighths of an inch. And then I can adjust it as I need to. Okay, so in theory, that's where my boning channel is going to be, but we are going to move it quarter of an inch this way. Right, we're making it smaller, okay, to a half an inch this way, okay, and then we draw the line. Actually, you know, I've changed my mind on this. The boning channels should be straight and the lacing channels should be straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it in a full quarter of an inch here. So that's our, my first stitch line. And from there, We've got a boning channel there, stitch channel here, boning channel here, and then I will take it in I'm gonna do four boning channels. So this is, this is boning, this is boning, and my lace will be here. And then from here, we're gonna do four diagonal lines. One of the reasons this was poking me was because I put the boning all the way up here. There is a stitch line right here. So we, we cut off the boning there and stitch there, okay? So this is 10. 
front. You can spell, okay? And so we have one, two, three, four boning channels here, and then two boning channels on either side of the eyelets. I don't trust myself. And before I put the boning channels in, before I do anything, I'm going to baste the sucker up and double check it to make sure that that's gonna work. Because I did kind of change it from my original plan. And then obviously, you know, quarter of an inch down here, being lazy, and quarter of an inch up here. Okay? All right, so there's our front, and we're gonna do a similar thing to the side front. Okay, so here is my side front, and I am going to do the same thing. Oh, before I do that, let me show you a couple of things. I forgot to show you on the other two, but you do need to make sure that you're marking your uh, fabric grain direction. And uh, here's a handy tip for ones that are, are not necessarily straight, like, um, these are pretty easy because I just put them along the boning because that's where the straight grain is. But for this one, because it's kind of cut on the bias, what I did was I put the pattern piece, right? I'm tracing it, tracing it, la di da di da. And where, yeah, there. So then I took my ruler, and this, this really helps if you have a clear ruler, but you know, use what you have. And you know, it's here. So I put it along the grain line here. And then I drew a line here and here on the outside of the pattern. And then when I took it in, then I can align my, my ruler back up like that and draw in the center of the pattern and have it exactly in the direction that it needs to go instead of eyeballing it. If you're like me and you can't draw a straight line to save your life, that is the way to go, my friends. Okay, so I also, here is the original cut line in the tab on the side front. I have increased that by a half an inch because I need extra space because of my short ass waist. I need to take in my side here and I'm going to do it exactly the same as I did on the center front. I'm going to take in a quarter of an inch, boom, here, half an inch, boom, here, draw that line. Okay. All right, and I'm drawing my channels from there. Now I have Hmm. That's not going to work. I'm just going to do a quarter of an inch taken in. But I still can't, can I? Cuz I need to have boning here. Okay, so what you're seeing here is me noodling hard over these channels crossing at the top because I'm going off the mock-up instead of following the lines on the actual pattern. Sometimes this isn't as straightforward as you think, but I figure it out eventually. Yeah, that's why. Okay, I confused myself. Okay, so I can go from here. I can just go... Okay, so... There we go, that's why I'm confused. Okay, so this is why we use pencil, my friends. We can clearly see. Okay, here's a channel, here's a channel. And then from there. Geometry. Now I'm trying to fix the last channel to account for that quarter inch seam decrease I added originally. Okay, and there I get also my stitch line. So it's gonna be real tight, but I remember that when I was sewing it, that it was real tight when I took it in. So there we go. So there's my modifications. I got my quarter inch down here. Okay. Okay, so this is, um, this is 11, 11, side, 11, side, okay, okay, there is no boning in this section here, right, there's no boning here, no 
bone in here. No bone in here. Okay, so there we go. One, two, three, four. I saved the side back for last because I thought it'd be the easiest and knew I wouldn't have time to talk through all of them in daylight. <laughs> like all the others, I traced it out first, marked my grain and notches before starting. Like I said previously, I'm just starting at one end and making half inch increments across. Again, I'm going off of my mock-up instead of the pattern, so I get a little confused here. The important thing to remember is to follow the angle of the seam to make sure that your channels are straight. I ended up having to erase the center ones and redraw again because I wasn't following that direction. So here are all of my reboned pieces. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. I'm having a slight issue with one of the bones on the front that didn't happen on my mock-up. I may go back and readjust the channels at a later date if they keep giving me issues, but as of right now, these stays are super comfortable and I don't feel the need. And now, a very special announcement. Coming soon to a device near you. I've had requests to teach people a lot of things. Knitting, sewing, how to annoy people. Not. The most requested always seems to be cooking. I'm the daughter of a chef and spent my childhood around professional kitchens. We also cooked a lot growing up and I was using the oven when most of my peers were still trying to figure out their easy bake. So I thought I'd combine my two hobbies together. I'm going to be doing a new segment called Cooking Tips from a Time Traveler, where I'll dress up in period costumes and teach cooking things. Think like Marie Antoinette teaching knife skills. These will be short videos in addition to my sewing content. I'll focus mostly on skills with maybe one or two recipes stuck in there, mostly because I want to make tacos dressed up like Taco Bell. So if any of you have anything in particular you'd like to learn, please reach out to me. I have plenty of ideas, but I'm always open to more. Thank y'all so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support me, please remember to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't. It really helps my videos get seen. You can also click the little bell to be notified when I upload my new videos, which is usually every three weeks except during tax season. Up next is the mullet stays video where I make a pair of 18th century stays with a stomacher that's business in the front and a party in the back. That's about it for me, y'all. If you'd like to make my day and say hi, I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a comment down below to introduce yourself, share what you're working on, listening to or watching, or even just tell me a joke. I'm particularly fond of cheesy puns no matter how gouda or how bada. Thanks for watching y'all, and I'll see you next time. I have an F. Are you scared? Inappropriate comments down below. It is not. I can't say it like that. Of course. It helps if I know what I'm gonna say first. Of course it's gonna be one of those videos. If there are two things that require precision, it stays and souffle is bitch. Almost got through all. <sighs> and I will not enjoy wasting, 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 wasting my precious time. I am wasting my precious time right now. <sighs> Probably shouldn't be waving this knife around like this. Children at home, don't do this. Use adult supervision. Adults, use adult supervision. Is that it? Is that it? Are we done? I think we're done. Say fini, ha ha ha.